Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips have a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Take it to go out today, see if things came out today, see if things are on sale. Now today though, new release wise, uh, one of the only really big things that's coming out that I know will be in stores is a film called Spell. I'll be talking about that one at the end of this video, but really, really creepy film. Like I absolutely love that one, but that one's releasing today. And I believe there'll be a handful of other um, things as well. Just like a couple other things. Like I said, Spell is one of the main really big things uh, coming out today. Also though, at the end of this video, it's gonna be a whole bunch of brand new DVD Blu-ray and 4K reviews for some things I received a review and talk about for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. Some really, really cool stuff. And as always, too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video. If you guys have seen them, what you guys thought of them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Walmart we go. And if you guys didn't see my video last week, uh, check out the link below and you guys can find out about the upcoming horror film, uh, Dr. Uh, Gift, that I'm going to be acting in soon, that's directed by Abel Berry and Jennifer Stone. I, was, I worked with them uh, this past summer on the film Strix and had a really great time, so really, really excited about this one. Uh, check out the link below, like I was saying, if you guys haven't seen it yet, you guys can find out all about the movie. You guys can see the, uh, you know, the uh, teaser trailer, the pitch teaser trailer for the movie. But the uh, link is for the Indiegogo, and on there you guys can pre-order the movie on uh, DVD or on Blu-ray. Uh, they have producer perks, uh, perks to act in the film. So a whole lot of different really cool perks. Like I said, definitely check that one out yet if you guys haven't had a chance to. But now I'm going to head on in. And also, though, if you guys haven't seen my past two videos and you guys are wondering about, like, why I was real scruffy and unshaved and everything, uh, I'm, do I'm doing a film tomorrow, which is a Western horror film, and they told me, you know, they told everybody don't shave for the film. They want, like, you know, to be scruffy or to have as much beard growth as you can. So, yeah, so this is the longest I've ever gone. It's been a little over three weeks, but I end up, you know, uh, shooting it tomorrow, so by tomorrow we'll be all shaved and everything. So it'll be, you know, after I finish shooting, so I'll be back to my normal, uh, you know, normal look and everything because it's gotten into this really bad like super itchy stage now like especially under this mask it's just like getting like real real bad super super itchy so I don't think I'm really a, like a beard kind of guy it's gonna be cool though to see for a really really different kind of look for me because like I said I've never gone more than like probably I think like a week is the longest I've ever gone without shaving and everything but uh yeah so like I said it's definitely gonna be really different uh, hopefully in here though they have out the new stuff uh, because like last Tuesday uh, the Walmarts didn't have out any of the new things. There was like a lot of stuff missing. I did go to one this past weekend though, and I saw a couple different things out on the shelf, like a few different things that I didn't see the past week. So they did have a few different things. We'll see too if, I, if they have any of the stuff that I saw in here. I, I, I just showed you guys a quick little video though of the stuff that I saw, but we'll head over the section now though and see what they've got. But in here, though, luckily enough, though, I am seeing some new stuff out in here. Of course, though, this one does lock up a lot of the new stuff. It doesn't lock everything, though. It locks up kind of this stuff just in this section right here. It locks up all around this, right where they have, like, the ice cream stuff. But, like, down there, this stuff isn't locked in this location. Uh, but new release-wise, though, in here, though, like I said, there are a couple things. Uh, like I was mentioning, though, Spell. This one, which was, like, an absolute must-watch. I absolutely love this one. This one is on 1996 for the Blu-ray. But this one is one you guys have got to check out. Like I said, I'll be talk about this one more in detail at the end of this video. Uh, so it's 1796 for the Blu-ray, uh, 1996 for the DVD. It's always a little reflective in this one to the show. Also the one uh, Jungle Land, uh, that released today and that's uh, 1296 for that. And I see this kind of like only at Walmart collection here, six, Steve, six film collection from Stephen King. And it has, um, it's a DVD one, but it has App Pupil, Bag of Bones, which I think that was like a TV movie. Uh, Christine, The Dark Tower, Secret Window, and Stand By Me. Also, though, too, what released today was uh, the complete second season of uh, Twilight Zone, the new series. And that one's uh, $27.96 for the Blu-ray of that one. Uh, this is one of the ones that was last Tuesday that I didn't see, uh, The Yellow Rose. I've not seen this one, though. If you guys have seen this movie, let me know how this one was. That one is uh, $12.96 for that. Other than that, though, I didn't see anything else. I did. A, I quickly peeked around here, and it seemed to be all the same things over here. And then in the actual section, though, uh, I didn't see anything else different in here. I didn't see anything new in the 4Ks. And then right here, I didn't see anything new uh, mixed in. It seems to be all the same stuff. And I didn't see any of the stuff that I showed in that quick clip, uh, you know, that I saw in the other 
uh, Walmart. But other than that, though, I don't see anything else in here. Oh, no, I did see... Oh, some of the other things I did see different was these I meant to show. Uh, they have, like, these Valentine's Day ones here. And they have, like, different covers. I don't know if these are Walmart exclusives or not, but they're all DVDs, and they're all $7.50. And then some of them are $9.96. And then one of them is uh, $39.96. But there are, like, different kind of slip covers on them. So they have, like, Age of Adeline. And they have like reflection stuff to them, so they're kind of cool. Uh, they have one for Warm Bodies, which I always really like that movie. Uh, Forever My Girl, Five Feet Apart, which is a really good movie. La La Land, great movie. Uh, Dirty Dancing. Like I said, they all have these kind of reflections to the, the dresses and the stuff like that. So they're kind of cool, though, I still believe, um, as well as the Twilight Saga collection. Like I said, these ones are all uh, DVDs. But other than that, though, I didn't see anything else different or new here, as far as I can tell, though. Well, actually, I did see one thing here, too. There was, like, a Valentine's Day section right here. And it was kind of like, um, I saw a couple newer ones down here that are just, like, new slip covers on them. Which I never saw. They have, like, the, you know, Valentine's Day, you know, heart candies on here. So, like, Trolls World Tour, the Shrek 4 movie collection here, uh, Secret Life of Pets 1 and 2, Abominable, uh, How to Train Your Dragon collection, the, Illuma, the Illumination collection, and Boss Baby. So, yeah, these are the only other... Uh, different things that I saw in here today, though. Into Target we go. Yeah, but in here today, though, the only thing new that I was seeing was a spell, and that one was $19.99 for the Blu-ray and $17.99 for the Blu-ray of that one. Other than that, though, I didn't see anything else new in here. I looked kind of around to see if they had, like, the Twilight Zone or any of those, and I didn't see it. It's funny, though, that they, like, I guess they re-released this one again, or they're kind of promoting it again, the Xeon Flux one here. I remember that from back in the day, but other than that, like I was saying, I didn't see anything else new here, though. But yeah, though, I was looking through there, and like I was saying, I didn't see, like, the Twilight Zone Season 3, so I don't know if they're going to carry that one, or they just didn't end up putting that one out in the shelf or anything, but if you guys went to Target, let me know in the comments below, though, if your location had anything different new today. Like I said, the only thing I saw was the Spell one, uh, but let me know, though, if you saw, like, you know, the Twilight Zone uh, Season 2 or anything else different in your location today. But now, though, going to head to uh, Best Buy. Into Best Buy we go. So we'll head back there, though, and see what new stuff they have in here today. And luckily enough, though, this location's been pretty good, though, at having out all the new stuff lately. Uh, but now that I said it, I might have, like, jinxed it. But we'll see. Let's check, though. So let's see over here first. This is where usually they have the new stuff. But I might have jinxed it by saying that. Let's see. So all this stuff over here, like Tenant. These are all older ones here. Love and Monsters, I think, I believe that was last Tuesday for, you know, looking at what, what new release was is when stuff came out. Uh, that one was really good, though. I really like that one, if you guys haven't seen that one. Oh, I do see a couple things over here. Um, I think this one might have been new today. This one, Lupin 3, L a Lupin 3 the first. Like I said, I think this might have been today. I don't know, though. I might be wrong about that. Uh, but that's $22.99. That's a limited edition steelbook. And then the standard edition of that one is uh, $18.99 for that one. But I don't see the movie, um, you know, spell anywhere. Let's see if I don't see it, like, mixed in anywhere. In case I was just, like, overlooking it. There's nothing right here. And I glanced quickly at the actual section and wasn't seeing it. You know, let's see. Like I said, I might have jinxed it. No, no, no. Here it is. They do. So let's see. There are, and there I see a couple other things in here today too. So I see the spell here on Blu-ray, and that one is um, yeah, $19.99 for that one. And then um, they have Jungle Land, and that one is uh, $12.99 for that. I'll be talking about this one as well as Twilight Zone at the end of this video. And then Twilight Zone is uh, $24.99 uh, for that one here. And then this is one of the other things today that came out. I think this is like the third in the series. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I think that this is like the third movie in this series, I believe. But it's a movie here called Skylines, and that one is uh, $14.99 uh, for that one. Other than that, though, let's see if there's anything else mixed in down here. Don't see anything new down here. Uh, no, other than that, I, I, I am almost too finished with uh, Schitt's Creek. I'd be like, I think I have like four episodes left or five episodes. Like, very rarely do I go and like watch through the whole series of something. But I, I really love this show, so I'm just about finished with that one. But uh, other than that, like I was saying, though, 
don't see anything different in here. Uh, this one I didn't see out in the other Best Buy last week, but if you guys have not seen this one, 12 hour shift, this one was really, really good. This is definitely one I would definitely recommend you guys check out. Really like that one a lot. Let's just see, just make sure there's nothing else random mixed in over here. But no, don't see anything random or any random new uh, steel books or anything like that. Random copy of the New Adventures of Old Christine just kind of randomly up there. Uh, and they do have tremors in here. This is this the 4K one? No, the Blu-ray one, but that's cool. They have the Arrow Video uh, New Tremors uh, Special Edition one in here. But let's see, other than that though, I don't see anything else different. But like I said, like at least they had out the new stuff in here today though. So anyway though guys, that was all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also though, let me know in the comments below, you know, what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K, if you guys ended up picking up anything uh, new today or anything new you guys have picked up recently. Also as well, let me know, you know, anything new you guys have checked out on streaming, any new movies you've checked out, or any new TV shows or anything like that. And also be sure to let me know what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video, what you guys thought of them, if you guys have seen them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up but anyway though guys now stay tuned for the brand new reviews and the first one I got here is from Lions Gate. It's a movie here called Lena and Snowball. This one is basically, though, about this girl who lives in this small town with her father. And basically, though, she's like kind of, there's like a group of these like four kids. And there's like, except for the one kid, like they all are really like mean to her and always kind of bullying her and giving her all kinds of problems and everything. And the one day, though, she ends up finding out in the woods, she finds this little lion out there, this baby lion. And basically, you find out in the beginning of the movie, though, that these two bad guys who are both trying to find the lion, because the lion had gotten away from them, and they were going to, you know, get the... They were kind of like the Harry and Marv kind of characters, like in Home Alone. They're kind of like bumbling, like foolish acting. They don't know what they're doing, especially in the beginning. They're acting real like they don't know what's going on. They're real crazy and everything, because they're so mad that this little lion had gotten away. And they know that their boss is like, it's going to be really bad if they don't get this lion back to their boss. And the, the boss is like calling them going, you know, it's going to be really bad if you don't get this lion to me so they're basically trying to figure out where this lion is and of course this girl had found the lion takes the lion home and she's basically trying to figure out how to hide this lion she doesn't want anyone to find out about it and then of course the whole time the bad guys are trying to you know the bumbling like harry and marv type guys they're trying to find where this lion is to get it back because they have to get it to their boss and stuff. It was actually a really fun movie. Uh, the one bad guy, um, you know, there's not a picture of him on the back here, but he was in the movie. Um, he's a character actor who's been in lots of different stuff, but I always remember him as a kid. He was in um, Pippi Longstocking as the guy who was like, Mr. Nielsen loves bananas. And he was also in, um, uh, you know, um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and then the one po point time he's throwing toilet paper, and the guy's like, why are you throwing doo-doo paper at me? I don't know. I've always been a fan of that guy, and he was great in here playing one of the bad guys in this one. But this is actually a really, really fun movie, just basically about these two bad guys trying to get this lion, and the girl, you know, is trying to keep the lion hidden in her, you know, in her, in her um in the barn at her house and stuff like that. And it's basically like her and her one friend, you, you know, who's a group of the, with the bullies, like the bad bully kids. Uh, but, you know, the one guy is nice and he likes her and everything and they become friends and everything. So they're both trying to protect this lion and everything. But definitely a very fun uh, movie here. The next one here is from uh, Warner Brothers and they sent over a free copy of this one to let you guys know that this one was available. This is a movie here called uh, Toys of Terror. And this one, it, it kind of has vibes of like... Um, Puppet Master a little bit. It has like that kind of a uh, feel to it. Puppet Masters and demonic toys and those type of films, which was cool because even the um, the uh, you know the toys in here they were done like um, you know kind of classic stop motion style. So they had like this real old school kind of vibe to them, which I thought was really cool. They didn't do them all like digital or anything. They were done like you know kind of classic or they were done like in that style. And it's basically though about this. Um, this family ends up moving to this old uh, mansion that was like an old orphanage in the past. It had like a bad history to it and everything. And they basically move there because the parents are planning on, you know, you know, fixing up this old house and then flipping it because they kind of go around and like flip houses and things like that. So basically they, they go there and their kids come along and everything. And the kids end up discovering, though, 
in uh, you know the house there's like this toy chest of like this this locked toy chest and they basically they open up the toy chest and the toys are all like kind of like something is with them like possessed or alive or something like that like I said pu puppet master kind of feel feel to them and basically though the toys are like you know come, you know in the house and stuff like that and bad things start to happen and everything and they kind of are like it's kind of like what is happening here how are these toys doing this and exactly it was a really actually like I said it if you guys are fans of those kind of films and even like child's play a little bit too those kind of like uh, you know objects like when a toy or something like that is alive running havoc and causing all sorts of problems this also was a, lo a lot like the movie too uh dolls that was another this is movie is kind of like that one uh as well but on here though this has some featurettes some making of uh, of the movie on here toys of terror come to life and a terrifying weekend the making of toys of terror uh features on these ones uh, the next one that I got here is from a uh, Paramount, and this one was great. Like I, I absolutely love this movie. I kept thinking about this movie, and also, this is the first movie in a really long time that I thought was actually really scary. There were some really creepy visuals in this movie that really creeped me out. Like especially like one thing that was like a like, like this jump sort of scare in here that just like got me at one point. I was like, oh! But this movie was is an absolute must watch. I I mean I absolutely love this. Uh, this movie here called uh, Sp uh, Spell. This one has in here uh, Om uh, Om Omri uh, Hardwick and uh, Loretta Devine, who I've always been a fan of Loretta Devine, uh, you know, ever since... I think the first movie I remember seeing her in was um, Urban Legend, and you know she played the security guard at the campus, and she was always my favorite character in the movie. Like, absolutely loved her character in the film. So, like, I was always a fan of hers, and she's been in movies, tons of movies throughout the years. But I, this is probably one of my favorite movies of hers. I thought she was so great and like creepy in here too. It the movie it, it kind of has a vibe of like misery mixed with like voodoo and crazy like voodoo spell stuff going on. Uh, it's basically Basically, though, about this family, you know, that ended up, um, you know, they, they basically had a really, really rich family. And the father, though, you know, he just got this message that like, I think it was his grandfather or uncle or something had passed away. So basically, you know, he, he wants to go back there and go back to where he came, you know, was grew up and everything. And he hadn't been in this area for years and years and years. So he's basically going back with his family and he takes his private plane, which he's flying there and everything. And, it's, and it has a creepy setup, too, because they like go and stop to get gas, to gas up the plane. And like people are like one guy is acting really strange there and everything. And then they take off on the plane. And they end up catching this terrible storm, and the plane ends up, you know, basically, you know that the plane's going down. And, you know, um, you know, Omri Hardwick's character wakes up in the attic of this house, and his foot is all messed up. He doesn't know what has happened to him. You know, he's panicking. He can't, he, his family isn't there with him. And he's talking to the people that own, the, you know, the, the house. And they come up there, and it's, you know, Loretta Devine's character, uh, you know, Loretta Devine's character. Is it Devine or Devine? I, hopefully, I'm, I think it's Devine, I think. But basically, you you know, she comes up there along with her husband, and you know they're both acting really strange. And he's saying, "Where, where's my family?" And they're like, "Oh, oh you're the only person that we found in the plane. I don't know." I and he's trying to get out of the house to find them, and you know they're not letting him. And that's basically all I can say. But it just goes in these crazy ways with this thing that's called a Booker T, which is like really creepy. I, like I said, it was this was so incredibly creepy, and, and it starts off in one way and just keeps getting creepier and creepier as it goes along with him. Kind Kind of trapped in this in this house trying to figure out who's going to get away and find his family and everything but an absolute must watch like i guys I, honestly i love this but it has on here though a uh, special feature wise it has a uh, 15 deleted scenes including op alternate opening and alternate ending it has the alt uh, uh, the um art of hoodoo uh you know and which is you know over our bonus our our bonus features on this one the next one here is from um, Paramount as well. It's a movie which stars Finn Cole and Margot Robbie, and it's uh, Dreamland. And this one is basically though about this kid. I think he was—I can't remember how old he was supposed to be, but he, you know, this is all set during the Great Depression and everything. And you know, it's all set during in like I think it was in Texas. It's set, and it's like at the time where people are kind of moving out to um, L.A. and to California because like they're they've kind of like not a lot there and not a lot of stuff to money-wise or jobs or anything like that in this area area and the kid though 
you know, he's really into like comic books and he likes detective stories and detective books and all these kind of things. His father doesn't like that. He wants him to get a, a real job. And at the same time, there's really no jobs there and everyone in this area is moving away and his best friend is moving away and everything. And they, they're all, all around town, though, the people in town are talking about how there's this, uh, this woman, you know, who's played by Margot Robbie, who, you know, had robbed this bank and then, you know, was said to have killed these people and they're all looking for her. And basically there's like this big reward for her and everything it's like a ten thousand dollar reward and you know he ends up going back to his you know to his house and finds that she's hiding out in his barn and it's basically though he kind of likes her so he's kind of like not so sure what he's going to do and she's kind of like trying to you know say well listen can you hide me here and can you get me away and you know I'll, I'll, I have money from this from the from you know from robbing this bank but I didn't kill anybody that's they're just lying about that I didn't do this but you know if you get me you know I'll give you more money if you can get me out of here and that's basically what it is to make it worth it to him to get him away but like I said he kind of likes her so it's kind of like that going on between them. It was actually a pretty cool movie here. Like I said, this one here was called uh, Dreamland. The next one here is from Paramount as well. This is a movie here, you know, with Aaron Eckhart, uh, Heather Graham, Tommy Lee Jones, called Wander. And this is basically though about like, um, you know, um, Aaron Eckhart and Tommy Lee Jones are these guys who have like, um, kind of like a one of those kind of radio shows where they have like conspiracy theorists and they have all these theories about things. They're kind of living out in the middle of nowhere, kind of like out in the desert, and they live in like a trailer out there, and they kind of have their show that they do, and the, you know, and they're kind of like kind of hiding because they say a lot of controversial things about the world and everything and they don't want anyone kind of finding them and Aaron Eckhart's character used to be this cop who ended up leaving the, the force and everything because of things that had happened but they end up getting this call uh, you know when they're on the radio about this woman talking about her, her, her daughter was killed uh, you know and they were saying that it was like, you know, the police were saying it was a car accident, but there was like a bullet wound kind of thing. And, you know, the mother is saying, well, obviously there's more to this, but the police are not looking into this. They're letting the whole thing go. They're not, you know, believing this. You know, they're just saying it was a, it was a car accident. And that's how she died. So basically, though, you know, uh, Tommy Lee Jones ends up, you know, convincing Aaron Eckhart to go back kind of into his detective work and being like a private investigator for this woman to kind of go to this town to try and figure out exactly what had happened to this girl. So it's basically him though going there to try and get to the bottom of the whole thing but of course though he starts kind of digging into things and it's not a good thing him looking into this whole thing and it's kind of it's also at the same time too Aaron Eckhart's character is sort of trying to redeem himself because of you know what happened in the past with the force and all that kind of stuff it was a pretty interesting movie here I always love you know Tommy Lee Jones as well like I said this one here is called a uh, wander and the next one I got here is from Paramount as well. It's a movie here called Jungle Land. And this one here is basically, though, about these two brothers. And the one brother, though, you know, is uh, is a boxer. And he's trying to get, like, you know, legitimate and trying to get, like, fights and be successful at it and everything like that. And he does a lot of underground fights. And basically, though, it, um, they end up owing all this money. And they owe this money to this one guy. They have all this money that they owe. And they're having all kinds of financial issues and things like that. And the guy, though, you know, he knows that the one guy, he's the boxer, has a lot of potential potential that they owe the money to. And basically, he's like, listen, I have a lot of pull here, and I can get you into this one really big fight that is would, would win you all this money and get you on the on the card, and you would, you know, you would, if you win, which he thinks that he can, you would get all this money, and of course, he'd have to use a lot of that money to pay the guy back and everything, but the guy, is, he says, though, listen, you know, I'm going to get you on this card, but you have to do something. I, and he has this one girl that's in the house, and he's like, listen, I want you to get this girl to this location. I want you to get her there, and, you know, and then do that first, and then go to the fight. But you have to do that. If you do not take this girl to this location first, do not even bother going to the fight, and I'm coming looking for you. So basically, they have got to do this. But they have a crisis about not really wanting to do this because the girl... It's kind of trying to tell about what has happened to her and like she doesn't want to go to this place and everything so it's basically them trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do and because it's like a, you know because they know that it's not a good situation to take this girl here but at the same time this is a really huge fight that they would you know would, he would be getting into but then at the same time it's like if they don't do what they're what they're told and then they still owe the money to the guy and he'll come after him so it's kind of a situation where they have to, have to try and figure out what they're going to do but like i said this one here is called a uh, jungle land
And the next one I got here is from uh, Paramount as well. And this is the complete second season here of The Twilight Zone. And this is the, you know, the, the new uh, Twilight Zone series, which is hosted by uh, Jordan Peele. And this one, you know, uh, I'm really glad they're releasing physical uh, releases of this because it's a show that's only on, I think it's on CBS's, I think it's CBS All Access, which is their streaming service. So really glad to have copies of these ones. And, you know, it's basically, though, you know, uh, you know a brand new version of The Twilight Zone series, which is, you know, in this one, this series is hosted by uh, Jordan Peele. And it's basically stories that deal with like horror stories, science fiction stories, kind of like all kind of combinations between all those things together and everything. Like one of them on here was a woman that really wants to be like a... Um, successful musician and that's like her dream and like she ends up like um this she meets this one musician that she was a fan of and she sees the woman getting hit by a car and basically she ends up getting her talent after she dies passes away because of this coin thing that she got from her and basically though it's an interesting one because it's like it shows like how things it, it kind of you know because with the Twilight Zone 2 things kind of go wrong a lot too so it's like kind of like uh people are kind of clapping for her too much and like supportive like this crazy clapping it's a really pretty cool one on here but it has a whole lot of different you know um guest stars on here so it has like Tony Hale uh, Ethan Emery Billy Porter uh you know um Joe McHale uh, Jenna Elfman Damon Waynes Jr. Topher Grace so lots of different people but it's a really cool series series like I said I'm really glad to have these on getting physical releases but it has on here though feature wise it has deleted and extended scenes as well as a gag reel and I'll show you guys though a look inside here as well it has you know episode descriptions inside of here so it tells you what all the episodes are about and this is a um you know, a three disc set here. The next one here, this is from Paramount as well. This is also from uh, Nickelodeon. And this is the complete uh, 12th season here of uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. So SpongeBob SquarePants, the complete 12th season, which is hard to believe too. The show now has been on for over 20 years now. And I feel like SpongeBob, you know, out of all the, um, you know, Nickelodeon series, I feel like this is the, the last of the classic, you know, animated series. When I, when I think of like the classic early days of Nickelodeon, because this was later though, this was came in 99. But this was in my. I always feel like this show had this very similar vibes to like my favorite Nickelodeon ones, like you know, um, you know, uh, Rugrats and you know, um, Ren and Stimpy and you know. Um, Rocco's Modern Life. Those were always like my, my favorite ones, especially uh, Rocco and Ren and Stimpy were always my favorites. And this one always had that similar kind of vibe and really wacky humor. And if you guys have never seen the series, it's basically SpongeBob living under the sea in a pineapple and his friend Patrick. And it's basically just them on adventures and kind of all these problems under the sea. And you know, there's um, Plankton who's always because SpongeBob works the the um, you know at the Krabby um, Patty restaurant where he you know. And the Krusty Krab, where he makes Krabby Patties, and Plankton is like has this, you know, kind of cheeseburger restaurant place. It's a failure, and he's always trying to steal the, you know, secret recipe. So it's all those kind of things. But it's just a very, very fun series. It has on here though, feature-wise, special uh, SpongeBob Appreciation Day, Patchy's Beach Bash, on this one. And I'll show you guys though a look inside here as well. And it has, you know, the um, episodes guides on here uh, as well. But really, really fun show. And like I said, it, it definitely has, you know, like to me, it's like the last of like the real classic uh, Nickelodeon series. Uh, and the next one here, this is from um, uh, Mill Creek, and this is one that I just want to let you guys know was available. This is another of the uh, slipcover. I love these VHS style slipcover releases that they do. I have a lot of them behind me that I put up. Uh, and this one here is a movie which stars uh, Ralph Macchio, and it's called Crossroads. And like I said, I love the way these are designed because like they have, they're, they're totally like a VHS that's coming out of the case. It has on here like um, a VCR. I, don't, I can't tell what it says on this one, but it has like the sticker on here like they'll be on the tape and then it has like a, like a rewind me sticker here uh top hit drama and it's also they, they put like age to the cover as well so they like age it and scratch it up like it's older and the side here looks like like the vhs and here's like the tape the you know the uh, the title on the side and it even has like the one little thing that's on there so i don't know it's, it's, I, like, I love the way it's designed in the back you see like the vhs here as well and also though underneath the slip cover it has alternate artwork so that's really cool that it has different images you know inside here uh, as well but like i said just want you guys to know that this one was available uh from uh, mill creek uh, the next ones here these ones are all from uh, moviezing.com and i have a link below where you guys can order, the, order these ones for the best price and this one here is also from um, CBS DVD, and this is um, this is a show which I had not watched an episode of this show in years, probably like I think like at least 15 years. It's been a really long time. I remember when the show first started though. I watched this, 
and then the amazing race all the time this i think this is like when i think of like reality tv shows this is like the first reality tv show that i remember really really watching like when it when it first like when i remember really hearing about reality tv this is like one of the ones i always remember and this is uh, the newest season of survivor i don't know what season number this would be at but this is a survivor uh, island of idols if you guys don't know the show Survivor, it's basically though people, you know, it's a reality series and people going to, you know, the, this island and they have different teams and they compete in these competitions and stuff and only one person can win all the money and they get vote, they vote out the people who are the weaker players and stuff like that. And this one though, the characters though, the, the people who are, you know, the contestants, they have like an island where if they get, um, if they like lose a competition, they go to the uh, the idols island where it's like two of the bit like the best players from the history of you know Survivor, and they they're they're kind of to kind of like mentor them and kind of like Survivor boot camp and try and kind of give them you know like um yeah uh, advice and sort of try to help them so they can win the game and everything. Uh, on here though, feature wise, this has tribal council voting, uh, life at Pond Pond Ponderosa, uh, exit interviews, secret scenes, as well as a uh, scissor reel on this one. Here's a look though inside here and this is a uh, five disc set the next one here is from moviezing.com as well and this one here is from green apple and um yeah from green apple uh entertainment and this is a movie here called uh, a christmas sleigh and this is a like a christmas um slasher film i always like christmas horror films like of course silent night, silent night deadly night films uh there's a handful of different ones uh secret santa was one of the more recent ones uh christmas evil is probably like i would i think that's probably my favorite one i really like that one a lot and this one is basically though about these girls that are all in this cabin and everything like college students for uh, in this cabin and there's this crazy deranged person you know dressing like santa who's going around there killing them and everything and it's just like it's a, a you know an old school slasher film about them trying to survive and trying to get away from this guy and everything but it's actually a pretty cool uh, movie here like I said this one here is called a Christmas sleigh uh, the other one here from uh, Green Apple Entertainment as well is uh, a beach massacre at kill devil hills here and this is basically though um, these were friends that were going to this beach house and everything and like you kind of it's one of those movies too where it's kind of leading up to you know something bad is going to happen because you kind of like are like they're hinting at the ones like husband and you're you're knowing or the ex-husband you know that he's like a terrible guy and he's like abusive and just not a good guy and you know they're kind of hinting at it a lot that you know something bad is going to happen and it's basically though about you know the people who are all together in this cabin out there and the family in there and everything and basically though something is bad is going to happen to them and it's pretty much them trying to you know to survive from this whole situation and everything but like i said this one here is called beach massacre at kill uh devil hills and the last one from um from um you know from um moviezing.com and this is also from green opera entertainment is the um, movie here called the attic and this is basically though about this um this family that ended up moving into this home in Thailand. It was like a real, you know, renovated home that was really modernized and really fixed up, but it had like a history to it. It had some bad things that happened to it in the past. And they get there though, and immediately weird things start to happen. They start hearing things, start seeing things. It's just something really strange is going on in this house. And it's basically though, you know, them trying to get to the bottom of what exactly is going on and what, you know, what the history of this house is and all that kind of stuff. But this is actually pretty cool. Like if you guys like, you know, haunted house house kind of you know evil spirit possession kind of or possessed house kind of haunted house type movies this was actually a pretty cool one like i said this one here is called the attic and the next ones i got here are from gravitas ventures and the first one though this is one that i was so excited about when i heard this one was coming out and it's a movie that was shot 37 years ago and the movie ended up having like all sorts of problems and I, and I i i wish someday they would do like a documentary on this movie because i feel like it'd be really interesting but basically the movie like had something happen and ended up getting shut down so they never finished this movie and watching this movie you can tell and I, i'm gonna go through some of the stuff too but it's a movie here called uh, grizzly 2 uh, revenge and this has a bunch of different people in here like in the very beginning it has uh charlie sheen george clooney laura dern this, this is a really early movie for them it has in here though um john ray's davis you know from um indiana jones films and he's in tons of different stuff uh you know has louise fletcher you know from um of course you know uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest and i always think of her as well too from flowers in the attic which i loved her in that movie she was like creepy as the grandmother but like i said this is a movie that was shot and they shot some of it and they, they you know but they didn't finish it so basically now all these years later 
uh, it's finally been finished to the best of you know the ability of finishing this movie. So essentially, the story is uh, about like the the killer grizzly bear that is going around in, in the woods killing people, and it's kind of like the story of uh, kind of like a version of Jaws or, or sense. They're kind of like using the story of Jaws sort of because Louise Fletcher's character is running this big music festival out in the middle of the woods, and they're telling her she should shut it down because there's a bear out there. They shouldn't do it, and she doesn't want to do this because she has like big investors there. But the thing about this though is since this movie was not finished certain characters you're like okay that person was probably supposed to have been the lead of this movie Expe especially the one also who else was in here too um doesn't have a oh deborah um uh was it Deb deborah the one actress who was in uh, april fool's day was in this movie as well um but basically, though, I, and I think her character was probably supposed to be the lead in this movie originally, because there was like these two characters that you were like, you did not see enough of them. You know what I mean? Like, because you could tell certain things were not finished, certain things were like, you know. So it's basically like they had to go and insert a lot of this stock footage, like aerial shots of stock footage, uh, for, especially for the concert. The concert is the weirdest thing you've ever experienced in your life because it's like footage from the like early 80s and then it cuts to like modern footage of people like dancing, you know, and like, you know, at like EDM festivals and stuff. And then there's like this, it's like so surreal and peculiar, but it was like an amazing watch just because there was, there was a lot of really cool mo moments of it. Cause like some of the stuff too of the concert that they did shoot, the cinematography on it was amazing. Like the way that they were like lit it with the crowd and everything. You're like, wow, this was like some cool footage that, and, and, and it was, and it's, what was a shame was some of the performances, they never got the close ups. They never, I guess they just sort of filmed some of the tests because there was even stuff in here when you could, you were like, okay, the crew is back there. They're obviously, this is test footage that they had to just use. Even when some people were getting killed, <laughs> they would like take a footage of somebody outside making a weird face to kind of cut it to make it work. And it worked a, a, a little bit. It is a little confusing though with what's going on in it, but it's a it's a must watch. Like you got you guys have got to check this out though. Just just to see something like this that was shot and they kind of figured out how to make it work. It's kind of like um. I would love this to happen with the movie Ernest the Pirate, which apparently was filmed a lot of it. The last Ernest movie that he made before he passed away, it was kind of like that, where they filmed a lot of the movie. From what I heard, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure they did. Uh, and that would be amazing if someday, you know, they would do something like that to see like the Lost Ernest movie. But an interesting movie, though. I, I like this just for what it was, and it was cool to see like this Lost movie finally kind of get finished the best way that they could. But like I said, certain characters you could tell were supposed to have done way more and then you kind of like didn't know who they were and like their character development for them was not shot luckily a lot of the end it seemed like about 90 percent of that was finished uh none of the bear stuff was because the bear didn't work apparently so like the bear at the end you see some of it a little bit but then there's like these weird stock footage of the bear and stuff but it, it was it was cool nonetheless just to see it uh the next one here is from garage adventures as well this is a movie here called go don't go you know so no sorry it's called go don't yeah, so yeah, go, don't, go. Very dyslexic with this title. So I'm messing this up a little bit, but go, don't, go. And this is basically, though, a kind of like an... Um uh, last Man on Earth kind of movie, and it's like you know, and it's about this guy though, who like all of a sudden people just had vanished. They had just disappeared the one night, and they, they, they kind of show you, uh, and they, it, like it's interesting stuff they do too when he goes to certain areas, and like like a bar and stuff like that. He kind of remembers back to when people that he knew were there and everything, and he kind of has this you know, and it, so he kind of like goes to certain areas and he remembers what it was like, and he's kind of just going through the area, you know, and you know the world where there's no one there, and he's just sort of in this depressive state about the whole thing and about what's going on and everything and he's kind of like thinking about if he's going to try and go to this one area and, and thinking that maybe he can people could be there and it's it's, a, it's an interesting movie like I said it has it's a lot of like really well shot and really you know inter intricate kind of sequences in here the way they're put together but it's an interesting movie like it's a different kind of take on a last one on earth kind of film here uh, the next one here is from um Garage Adventures as well, and this is one here called Nina of uh, Nina of the Woods, and this is basically about this woman who's an you know an actress, and she basically though ends up you know she kind of came from this town where something had happened, and they had like a mystery to it and everything, and she was kind of since she was originally from there, they wanted her to come and be in this um kind of like a um 
like a ghost hunting kind of documentary supernatural reality TV series kind of thing. And they basically want her to go and kind of be like the expert there and then kind of go out into the woods and kind of talk about what she knows and she, since she's from the area and all that kind of stuff. And it's basically, though, about her going into these woods and it's kind of like... You know, you know, she never really believed a lot of this stuff, and it's one of those things where you go out there, and things start to happen, and things that they experience, and it kind of makes you kind of think differently about everything and everything, like that, that kind of stuff. But like I said, this one here is called uh, Nina of the Woods. Uh, the next ones here are from Severn Films, and this one here was amazing. This is this is a one you guys have got to pick up, uh, and this is one I remember hearing though, because this is basically uh, three short films that the director, same director, had done over the years, and then they were all compiled together into a feature and they all really fit together they definitely have that similar feel and they all the tone and everything to them i think two of them are 20 minutes and then one of them is 50 minutes so like a total of like an hour and 44 minutes but this is a movie here called family portraits a trilogy of america and it's three different ones on here and the one that i always remember hearing about was the one called cutting moments and it was like this guy and you know, and all of them too. The guy, it's people like that, like sort of seem like they could be normal, like like kind of people that are like people that are kind of crazy, hiding in plain sight kind of guys. And he like is this this guy who you know lives with, with his wife and everything, and he's just sort of acting really, really weird, and like he's like neglecting his wife. And like his wife does this crazy thing. And then what was the other one? The other one, I'm trying to remember what all the segments were. And then the, one of them was like, um, the, the third one I, I would say was probably, the, the one was 50 minutes long, was my favorite one. But they all deal with like really dark subject matters. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and just like the one was a woman who was in this accident and stuff like that. And like, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's it, like I said. It's it's. I don't want to ruin everything that goes on here, and it's and it's hard to explain this stuff because I said it's really dark. So it matters, and it and it's stuff where it kind of continuously gets worse and worse as it goes along. Like it starts out one way and then gets more and more crazy. But it, the the director, you know, is an amazing director. He did a, such a great job in this one. He also did a movie which I really I, I need to see though. He did it with Chloe Sevigny from two thousand and six. So I never had seen uh, which was a remake of the film Sisters, which I totally forgot that they I didn't even remember they made a remake of that. But has on here though a commentary track with the director, uh, commentary with Maitland McDonald. Uh, it has after all early or early short films. It has cutting mo cutting moments in interviews from 1998 it has podcasts on cutting moments a deleted scene behind the scenes still gallery and a trailer and and picture quality on here looks great like it looks really really great they did a great job cleaning this one up but one i really recommend you guys check out kind of in the in the style of not as like not gory in the same way but in the similar feel to like the necromantic and um death king and and those type of films it, it, it's in that vibe i would say of that kind of a, a feeling uh the next one though uh douglas buck though directed um a segment in this one as well and this is an anthology horror film which is by a whole bunch of different directors on here uh, some of them are you know jeremy caston who recently his film uh, the dead ones recently came out uh tom you know he also did the wizard of gore remake it has uh, tom savini and you know is one of the directors richard stanley who you know color out of space was it color out of space i believe and then you know and then he was originally directing you know the um uh, Island of Dr. Moreau remake with, um, and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they made the great documentary about that. But Richard Stanley is an amazing director. Like, and he is, and this is an anthology horror film. And it's, you know, Udo Kier is, it is a woman who goes into this theater playhouse. And Udo Kier is this weird sort of puppet kind of guy with this clay stuff on his face. He's really creepy in this movie. He's like moving around real weird. Like he's like a puppet on strings and stuff. And basically though, it kind of goes from story to story. And they're, and they all kind of range from like really crazy weird stuff to like super gory and all that kind of stuff but there's some really cool uh you know uh, segments on this one and i remember how much i love this one when this came out this you know released originally in 2011 this one has on here though feature wise it has a 2020 filmmakers commentary 2012 commentary track it has the baking uh backstage making of theater bazaar a new new feature length documentary it has french tv on set report on richard stanley's return to genre filmmaker because this was this is when richard stanley first started coming back to uh, doing films again it has um shock to you drop choice cuts on here as Shock to You Drop Choice Cuts for, for two different ones, two of the seg uh, the three of the segments on here. It has the Mother of Toads extended cut uh, trailers on here. But a really, really cool uh, anthology horror film that you don't hear about too much, but a really very cool one.
And the next one I got here is from Severn Films as well. And this one here is a documentary called Tales of the Uncanny, The Ultimate Survey of Anthology Horror. And this one here was, you know, originally started, they started working on this one right before everything in the world had shut down. So, you know, they had gotten a couple different interviews, like in-person interviews. But then they didn't know how they were going to continue on doing this, you know, with having to travel and getting people to come to the plate, the studio and all that stuff. So they ended up switching to doing this all through Zoom and through, you know, stuff like that. Like that so people would you know remotely do the questions or send their videos in and that kind of stuff so it all ended up doing remote and this is a documentary that is all focusing on anthology horror films so it talks about like the really really early anthology horror films some of the tv ones like trilogy of terror those kind of ones tales from the crypt all that kind of stuff everything having to do with anthology horror and this is all like talking all about that it's talking to filmmakers uh, directors all that kind of stuff like some of the people who get interviewed on here are like eli roth joe dante greg nicotero uh, Mick Garris, Ernest Dickerson, it has on here though uh, Tom Savini, Jen Wexler, Larry Fresherden, uh, Richard Stanley, Brian Tenchard, Trenchard Smith, uh, Brian Yunza, 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 uh you know, who did the. Um, Society and uh, Bride of Reanimator and a bunch of different stuff. Roger Corman. And it has on here, though, uh, two different bonus films on here, which is Eerie Tales, uh, you know, which is, um, yeah, Eerie Tales, which is from uh, 2000 and, uh, sorry, 1919. And it's in German with English subtitles. And it also has Unusual Tales, which is from a French film from 1949. So those are both uh, bonus uh, films on here as well. So really, really cool. If you guys are a fan of anthology horror films, though, this is a great documentary. Uh, the next ones here are both from um, Umbrella Entertainment. Now, these ones, though, keep in mind, these ones are region. So you guys would have to have an all-region DVD player to play these ones. They're in the Region 4 code, but they, uh, you know, they, you know they're, I think, believe they're Region 4. So you guys would have to... It, be in the Region 4 code area. These are Australian releases. Or have, like I said, an all-region uh, DVD player to play them. But this is one that I heard a lot about. And this one stars uh, Will Wheaton. And this was great. Like, I love this movie. You guys have got to check this one out if you guys have not seen this one. It's a movie here called Rent-A-Pal. And it, this is, like, totally my kind of movie. And it was, like, really strange. And, like, the kind of movie that I really like. And it's basically, though, about this guy who, like, you know, takes care of his mother. His mother's, you know, has dementia and he's basically her caregiver. He's home with her all the time. He can really never leave and go anywhere. If he leaves anywhere, he has to like have a, uh, you know, have his mother go somewhere to be watched for a couple hours. So basically he just cannot leave her to, to herself. So and this is, you know, set in 1990. And this is kind of like um, his character though is really trying to get a girlfriend. So he has, he does all those online, well, it wasn't online dating then, but it, he does video dating where you would go to this place and they would shoot you like saying hi uh my name's um like for example if i was like going there i back in like 1990 i've been like hi uh my name's uh you know uh sean c phillips <laughs> You know, uh, I'm looking for a, a lady that uh, does this or, you know, somebody that's into this and I really love this and I collect DVDs. Well, back then I would have been saying, oh, if I've traveled back in time, I have to be like, oh, well, I try, I collect VHS tapes, you know, so, something like that. But basically, though, people go to these this dating place where they film a video and then they send the tapes around. So basically, like, he goes all the time to this video place and he gets like a VHS tape that has a bunch of different people's uh, names on it. So it's probably like, 30 people and he has a booklet and he writes down if he likes the person goes back into the place tells them the name of the person and then he sent that then his tape is sent to those people to see if they have any interest in him so like i said an early kind of match.com tinder type thing but instead of all that it's done with a videotape but he's not having any luck. So the one day, though, he sees on the sale bin, they have like this tape called Rent-A-Pal, and it's Will Wheaton on the front cover, his character on the front cover, and he has this like really interesting smile on, on the cover. It's, it's this one right back here. Uh, I, I really would love a replica of that tape. I hope some company makes a replica of, of, of the tape. It would be really cool to have. But basically, though, he ends up... Um, you know, get, buying this tape, and it's like this weird Will Wheaton is like sitting there going, "Oh hi, what's your name? Oh, you know, I'm gonna be your best friend. We're gonna have a great time." And it's basically like him. It's kind of like you know, Dora the Explorer. She's like, Dora's like, "So, uh, how are you doing today?" Oh, that's I'm glad to hear. But that, and that's like kind of what Will Wheaton's character is like on here. He's like, he's watching this tape, but there's something really strange about this tape. You know, he starts to like saying things. But then you're feeling like the stuff that he's saying 
you know, the tape is almost like, is there something going on here? Because the tape reacts like in a, in a way where you're like, what is happening? It's really interesting. It's a really interesting thing about this, him becoming obsessed with this tape. And this is his best friend. And he's watching this all the time. And it's getting, it's really, really good. Like, like I said, guys have 100,000% got to watch this movie. Like I said, it's called Rent-A-Pal. And the last one here, this is from um, Umbrella Entertainment as well. Now, this is also region locked as well. This is region four locked as well. And this is a movie here uh, called uh, Faith-Based. And this is basically, though, about this guy... And it, it was just, I think it's him, him and his friend. And his father, though, the one guy, um, his father has this church and stuff. And, you know, it's not, it's it's basically going to go out of business because they have this money that they owe. And if they can't get this money, they're not going to be able to stay in business anymore. And, like, he was, t you know, he was talking to his son saying, oh, you know, uh, if only we could, you know, be like one of those big mega churches where they made, produced a film and then they made the money and the film would make the thing. And he's just like, yeah, we could never figure something like that out. And, but then the son comes up with later, he's like, oh, well, maybe we could really do that and the son and his friend want to put together this um faith-based uh film so it's basically about him trying to figure out how he's going to put together this movie with his friend and it's like kind of this whole big thing about them really having no clue what they're doing but they're trying to make this movie and they really and they and they're like wearing like green screen suits and all the like the, all the wrong type of stuff when they're doing it and and it's just it's this really wacky weird movie that they're trying to make and everything but it's a fun movie, though. It has a lot of people that they are in here, though. Like, it has Margot Cho in here. It has uh, Jason Alexander is in the movie. Uh, you know, it's just a, a fun movie. Like I said, this one here is called uh, Faith Based. But anyway, though, guys, that was all for the review portion of this video. And like I always say, if you guys enjoy these videos, I'd definitely give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching and subscribing. I'll